talk about the periodic table. And there are a few things to kind of do a little review first about some of the lessons that we've recently done in class. Uh, first one, what's a compound? Okay, maybe you defined this already. It's when you've got two or more different elements that are chemically combined. Why wouldn't it be okay to write the symbol for co uh, copper as capital C, capital U? Because first of all, it's capital C, lowercase u. Well, if you're writing an element symbol, the rule is you always capitalize the first letter and lowercase the second letter if there is one. Um, otherwise, it looks like a compound. Like this looks like carbon combined with uranium, which isn't even possible as far as I know. So um, that is a big mix-up. Another one that people get wrong a lot is they're trying to write cobalt and they'll accidentally write capital C, capital O. Okay, this is a deadly compound, carbon monoxide, versus cobalt, which is a metal. So they're completely different. How would you write the chemical formula for solid NaOH dissolved in water? Okay, so we've learned this new term, um, aqueous, means that that is dissolved in water. So you would follow it with a little AQ symbol. How many elements are present in H2SO4? Name them. And how many of each type are there? Okay, so we've got two hydrogens, we've got one sulfur, and we've got four oxygen atoms. Explain the difference between liquid sugar, C6H12O6 with an L after it, and aqueous sugar, C6H12O6 with an AQ. Well, we just talked about how this means that it's dissolved in water. So this one is simply just sugar water, okay? The first one is actually um, sugar that's been heated to its melting point, and so now it's in a liquid form, okay? So they would look very different. Here's our sugar solution, and here is liquid sugar. You may have seen it before uh, if you've tried to make caramel. When CaNO32 aqueous is combined with BaCl2 aqueous, two things are made. CaCl2 and what? Okay, so when you're first learning to do these kinds of uh, problems, it may seem confusing, but if you write it out and use the cancellation method, I think it becomes a little easier. Okay, so let me show you what I mean here. So we know that it makes CaCl2 and something else. Okay, so Law of conservation of mass says elements can't just disappear. Okay, and we learn more about that later in unit four. So Ca was used, so I'm gonna cross it out. Cl2, here it is. So that was used, I'm gonna cross this out. Well, what's left? NO32 and Ba. And since this is second in its compound, it stays second. NO32. And since the BA is first here, the BA stays first. So this is it, that's the answer. That's the other thing that's made. Okay, um, just for fun, I've got some different periodic table pictures. This was a proposed uh, picture of the periodic table. So instead of seeing the charts that we have in our room, um, imagine if you had seen it circular. So they kept the groups there, um, but somebody proposed that, kind of cool. Um, there's a bunch of silly ones you can find if you do some Googling. Um, this is periodic table of the internet. In fact, Google is element number two, G-O. Okay, so that's kind of silly. Somebody made the periodic table of elephants, which I have a poster in the room here. And each elephant is supposedly doing something related to that um, element. I like <laughs> fluorine, for example, has a little elephant that's brushing its teeth. Um, chlorine, apparently the elephant is in the pool um, because pools have chlorine. Uh, there's a periodic table of Minecraft that somebody made. Somebody also made a periodic table of Xbox games. Somebody carved a pumpkin for every element and made the periodic table of pumpkins. Um, this is a periodic table of cupcakes, which I can also say that I have made, um, and it took seven hours for a retirement party. It was a lot of fun, but a lot of work. Uh, somebody made a periodic table picnic table. Periodic table bedspread. You could have one of those in your dorm room when you go to college someday. Somebody loved it so much they got a tattoo. 
There's, of course, periodic table t-shirts. Here's Dwight wearing one. Um, you can get all sorts of silly t-shirts that spell out things with the ele elements. You can even apparently get onesies. Um, somebody got their car wrapped in the periodic table. All right, so let's talk about it. Um, there are around 118 elements, okay? One through 92 occur naturally, and the rest are man-made. And I say around 118 because they're consistently trying to make new elements, and we talk about that a little bit later on about how they do that, um, but sometimes they just pop up in the newspaper, I'm like, oh, they made another one. Um, and it takes a while for them to become officially named and things like that. Um, here's an example of one that was man-made. Einsteinium was discovered in the radioactive debris after there was a hydrogen bomb test that was done in the Pacific Ocean. So they honored Einstein. Um, it's element, let's see, number 99ES, Einsteinium. Uh, Mendeleev is a name to know. In fact, um, in, if you were here in class, uh, you heard the song about Mendeleev. He organized the very first periodic table, so he's kind of a big deal, and that was in 1869. Um, so let's talk about the periodic table and its different parts. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the metals. You'll notice that most of the periodic table is metals. Okay, so all of these are metals. All of these to the left of the staircase, pretty much. And then all of these at the bottom here are metals, okay? So what are metals anyways? Besides being located mostly on the left of the periodic table, uh, they, they have interesting properties. They conduct heat, they conduct electricity, they're shiny, they're malleable, which means they can be pounded into different shapes. Um, they're bendable a lot of the time. And that's in big contrast to the non-metals. Non-metals, which were mostly located on the right side of the periodic table, with the exception of hydrogen. Hydrogen's not a metal, even though it's in the upper left. Okay, hydrogen is often an exception and a special element. Um, those non-metals do not conduct uh, electricity or heat, and they have a lot of gases uh, and brittle solids. For example, sul uh, sulfur is a non-metal. Okay, and then there are the metalloids. So they're highlighted in pink up here. The metalloids are just that in-between category. Okay, they have properties of both metals and non-metals, so you couldn't really call them either. Okay, so they had to make their own special group. And they're located along this zigzag line, um, except for there's a, a, a couple exceptions. Aluminum and polonium are metals, even though they too border the zigzag line. Okay? So you'll often hear uh, parts of the periodic table referred to as groups, and those are the vertical columns. So this is group 1A, this is group 2A, group 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, group 7A, and group 8A. This is the transition metal group, sometimes called group B, and then at the bottom um, we'll talk about the lanthanides and the actinides. Okay, so here's another picture showing all of the different groups. Um, sometimes they're labeled groups 1 through 18, okay, but the, the labeling that we're going to use in class is the A system, the A and B system like I was referring to, okay, and there's some famous groups on the periodic table, okay, first of all, probably every chemistry student's favorite, the alkali metals, those are in group 1A, so besides hydrogen, um, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium, they're shiny, soft solids, um, you can cut them with a knife. Uh, they're highly reactive with water, which is why they become a favorite. Okay? They're never found as free metals. Um, they're always combined with other things, so you have to do some work to um, get them free. And there's a really good YouTube I recommend that you watch. It's the Brainiacs throwing uh, these alkali metals into uh, things like bathtubs and showing how explosive they are. Although I heard the video was a little bit exaggerated. Um, but who knows? And we're going to do some of these demos in class with the first three, lithium, sodium, and potassium. Uh, potassium uh, ignites on fire immediately, so you can imagine why I don't do those as demos uh, in the classroom. Next group we're going to talk about is the alkaline earth metals. Okay, so we just talked about the alkaline metals, now we're in the second group over. Okay, the alkaline earth metals aren't as exciting as the alkaline metals, 
but they're pretty cool. They've got some famous elements that you've probably heard of. You've heard of magnesium, uh, calcium. You may not have heard of some of these other ones, beryllium, strontium, barium, and radium. Uh, these are shiny. They're a little bit harder and more dense than the alkali metals. Um, they're still reactive with water, but not as much as the alkali metals. Okay, you're going to get to see calcium in water in class. Um, let's see. This is, if you were in class, um, you had to make a prediction, would magnesium or calcium react more vigorously with water? So like I said, you get to see those. Okay, and the answer was calcium, because as you move down a group, things become more reactive. That is the trend on the left side of the periodic table. Okay, so then there's this group in the middle, okay? And that's why actually they're named the transition metal. Because think about it, you've got these metals over here, and you transition as you move across the table to the non-metals. Okay, the transition metals, aka group B, are not as reactive as those metals in group 1A and 2A. And to be honest, they have quite a variety of properties, um, which you'll learn about throughout the year. Okay, and there's some famous precious metals in that group, copper, silver, gold, um, platinum, okay, and lots of other cool uh, metals in the transition metals. Okay, then another famous group is the halogens. Now the halogens, we're kind of skipping over these groups, okay? The halogens are the second to last group, and they are very reactive non-metals, okay? And it's the opposite as the left side. These actually get more reactive as you go up this group. So fluorine is extremely reactive, okay? Not with water, but with metals. And halogens actually means salt forming. That's where they got their name um, because these like to form salts, which are ionic solids, such as sodium chloride. Finally, the last famous group, the noble gases, that very last group on the table, group 8A. Um, these are extremely unreactive, and what that means is they don't combine with other elements. They're totally fine on their own. So sometimes they're called inert gases. Okay, and there's another YouTube video to watch here. Okay. All right, and the noble gases, I'm sure you've heard of some of these. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. All right, so I've already been referring to reactivity, and I said elements on the lower left, those heavy alkali metals, and then the upper right, besides the noble gases, those lighter halogens are the most reactive. Okay. Um, the noble gases, like I mentioned, and the transition metals, not very reactive. The most reactive metal is francium, and sometimes uh, people say cesium and francium are virtually a tie. And the most reactive non-metal I mentioned is fluorine, the upper right corner besides the noble gases. Okay, there's a picture showing how reactive fluorine gas is with metal. It basically looks like a mini explosion. So we've talked about the vertical columns on the periodic table. What about the horizontal rows? So these are called periods. There are seven rows that go across the periodic table. So this is period one. It just has hydrogen and helium. Period two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you might say, hey, what about these guys? Well, they didn't want the periodic table to be super long, so they took these out and put them at the bottom, but you can see it goes um, 50, 37, 38, and then it skips, I can't see my numbers on here, to, um, to the next level, right? Let me see if I can move this box here so I can see the numbers. Okay, here we go. So... It goes 55, 